From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello, and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. You know, if ever there were a time that I love the season, it's this one. In fact, Jack always enjoyed uh, Christmas as the most blessed time of the whole year because he made very much the emphasis of what it really means. I'd like for you to take a look, please, right over here and see what so many people make Christmas to be. A holiday or a holy day, one of the two. And so many people, we're gonna talk about that in just a moment, are not making it a holy day anymore, but they're making it strictly a holiday. In fact, they even leave out the word Christmas in so many places. Instead of saying even Merry Christmas, they'll say Happy Holiday. And we want to talk about that in just a moment and really see where the world is going with this. As I said, Jack always loved Christmas so very much. I'm going to put him on in just a few minutes, but before that, I want to introduce our guest. And my, oh my, Jack Van Impey loved our uh, guest today because he felt that he was a true friend and a great man of God, Dr. David Williams. Now, Dr. Williams uh, served as pastor of Mount Hope Church in Lansing, Michigan, for more than 30 years. Thousands of ministers were trained through the Mount Hope Bible Training. He has quite a, quite a venue right here of everything that he's done. But his main focus that always touched our hearts, Jack and mine, the church planting and missionary uh, outreaches was a great focus of Dr. Williams. He really wanted to do this. During Dave's tenure, 43 new Mount Hope churches were launched in the United States, over 300, now listen to this one, in West Africa, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and 200 in Asia, and a combined membership of over 100,000 people. So you can see why my husband felt he was a great friend and a great man of God. And welcome, Dr. Williams, well, to our Well, thank you, Dr. Rexella. Your, your husband was a master soul winner, yes. and that's why, uh, that's why we were such good friends, yes. because wherever he went, he was winning people to Jesus. Oh, he was. He just, Whether it was at the mall or in a crusade. Yeah. We couldn't even go into a restaurant. And I'd say, honey, let's go right to our table. He'd stop at about six different tables. <laughs> you know all about that oh, I remember we were at the uh, Somerset Mall one time, and he pointed into a store, and he said, hey, I've been witnessing to her, but just haven't been able to lead her quite to the Lord yet. Now you go in and see what you can do. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dr. Jack. That was. Me, that was. For sure. I will never forget when... Uh, we went to see uh, Dr. Williams at his wonderful, wonderful church, and this was our second time there. Uh, I, we couldn't believe what happened. I would like for him to just tell you what happened quickly before we get into this great, great program. Uh, we were amazed because the, not only was the church packed, but the many branch churches that he also had were packed and overflow crowds into all of the, the rooms uh, everywhere packed. And my husband gave a great message. And I can't believe the result. How many souls came to the Lord? Oh, you're going to love this. How many souls came to the Lord that day? 3,002. Okay. 3,002. 3,002. My husband said, now we beat Pentecost, right? He did. He <laughs> called me and said, oh, brother, we beat the day of Pentecost. They had 3,000. We've had 3,002. But we had the, uh, our daughter churches set up with satellite downlinks. Yes. And we had the big uplink in Lansing at the church. And so it, what a blessing. Yes. Thank you, Rexella, for all you've done for us. Oh, well, we praise the Lord that many, many souls that day found the Lord. And I cannot imagine all the souls that Jack Van Ippy has already met in heaven that he won to the Lord. Well, we're going to be getting into a very, very serious, serious topic today. And it has to do with Christmas. I love Christmas, don't you? I think from a child, 
your mom and your father probably taught you the importance of Christmas, but that's not being taught too much today. Uh, if you will, take a look, please, at this first article. Christmas and the world. Well, you see Santa Claus, and nothing wrong with that. And you see the gifts being given out. But uh, let's see exactly what that means to so many people. Again, for many, Jesus isn't the reason for the season. Oh, how sad, because this is all about Jesus. Going on, holiday drinking trends. Well, that's what it means to a lot of people. It's a holiday. Uh, you know, the adults, it goes up 16% and 22% and 50% where people even say alcohol doesn't play a role in our family. But 96% during the holidays, they drink. Adults went to work hungover after the party. Oh, my. Let's go on, please. Drinking and driving under the influence during the holidays. Well, alcohol-related. At Thanksgiving, uh, it goes up 40%. Christmas, 37%. New Year's holiday, 58%. The drinking and driving. And then once again, please, between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day, 728 people will be injured or killed by DUIs each day, each day this holiday season. Well, it's worldwide. This is in the UK. Well, the girls came out of the, the nightclub, collapsed on the street. Oh, my. They're trying to pick them up. And here's another one. Oh, boy. I can't believe it. Nobody to help her. She collapsed on the street. That's also in the UK. Friends, do you see where the world is going right now? I sort of feel like we've lost touch with what Christmas really means. Is it just a holiday or is it supposed to be a holy day? Uh, Dr. Williams, I'm going to call you Dave if you don't mind. You said I should. How do you feel about the way the world is going right now? Alcohol and how uh, just uh, having parties and that type of thing. Well, it's like uh, we talked earlier it's what your husband said would happen in the last days. That's right. Now, we have to remember that Christmas was what was what's called the first advent. It's the season of advent, which is, means the first coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And many that were living in that time were living the same way, even in the, the, the religious elite people. And they missed the first coming of Christ. Yes, yes. They didn't know it was being two phases, first coming and second coming. And there's people today that are under the deception that the end of the world is coming. We know the end of the world's not coming, but we know that Jesus is coming. And it, it'll be in phases. People think it's just going to be a big flash and it's going to be over. There's, it, it's going to be a process. Absolutely, there will be. And sometimes I kind of think that... Um, there may be a war on Christmas. People out there, kind of a war. I'd like for you to listen to something that I just received. It, uh, Robert Jeffers, a senior pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, he said a few years ago, organized a movement to call this season what we really should call it, and that's what we need, the Christmas season. He asserted that businesses today who display happy holiday greetings are simply stooping to political correctness and how true that is. Let's be politically correct. Well, again, from the Pew Research Center, please. Today, fully half of the U.S. public, in fact, 52%, say that the choice of holiday greetings like Happy Holiday or Merry Christmas doesn't matter to them. They don't really care. Say what you want. You can leave. Jesus, you can leave Christ out of Christmas. And the role of Christmas celebrating uh, seems to be going down all the time. You know, I just want to say that it's all right to give gifts. My, I, I used to wake up 
uh, Dave and on Christmas Day, and boy, I'd rush out, you know, underneath the tree, and my two brothers would rush out. There would always be gifts from mom and dad. But my father would always say, one minute, we want to thank God for his gift. Mm -hmm. And how true it is. We need to be teaching our children the real meaning of Christmas. But I think that they pointed out very well in these articles, there's sort of a war on Christmas out there. Don't use the word Christmas, just happy holiday. Do you think there's a war out there on Christmas? I know there's a war out there, not only on Christmas, but on Christ. And it's leading to what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, strong delusion, because there's a deception that Christmas is just a secular holiday. In fact, I read a story about two, two ladies that were looking in a department store, and the department store had a nativity scene in the window, yes. and they said, oh, look at the church, horning in on Christmas now. Oh, 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 my. That, that's the type of attitude a lot of people yeah, have. Yes. Oh, my, oh, my. Well, I think one reason they may feel that way is because they don't know who Jesus really is. Jack Van Hippie never hesitated to say who Jesus really is. We're going to be zeroing in on that right now. And as always, I would like for you to see what Jack had to say about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Take a look. The first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. His name is Yahweh, but in this text, the Hebrew says, in the beginning, Elohim created. Why? Because whenever he works in unity with others, it becomes a plurality, a trinity, if you will. What? That's right. When we get to verse 26 of that first chapter, God speaks saying, let us make man in our image. Us and our happens to be much more than just one person, the Father. Well, was he speaking to the angels? No, the angels had no part in creation, Isaiah 45, 18. To whom was he speaking? His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on. Here's the Trinity in the Old Testament. Oh, you rabbis ought to get into this like I have. Why? Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who hath established all the ends of the earth, created all this? What's God's name? What's his son's name? Old Testament, Vexilla. Now, all three of those were spirit beings. The Father was and is a spirit, John 4, 24. The Holy Spirit was and is a spirit. He's called the Holy Spirit, scores of times like Ephesians 4, 30. But Jesus was a spirit for he was in the form of God, but he took upon himself the form of a servant, flesh, to die on a cross, and only blood within that body could provide salvation. Christ was in the form of God, yes, a spirit, 1 Peter 1.20. Christ was foreordained, chosen before the foundation of the world to do what? Revelation 13.8. Christ is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. When the world was created, it was all planned already. But now it had to occur. So Galatians 4, 4 says, when the fullness of the time was come, the fullness of God's plan, God sent forth his son made of a woman, the precious Virgin Mary. This was a miracle work by that Holy Spirit who created in the Old Testament, created now, this body. And that's why Jesus said in Hebrews 10, 5, a body, my Father, prepared me in the womb of this precious virgin. Oh, and this one was God, God from all eternity. Now, do you know that he was born in Bethlehem? That's Matthew 2, 1. Now, let's see that he existed from all eternity. Micah 5, 2. Thou Bethlehem, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet shall he, this Savior, come forth out of you, 
who was from old, from everlasting. Christ is the everlasting God, the second member of the Trinity. You can't get around it. There's no doubt about it. We don't have to doubt who Jesus was. The babe lying there is the Son of God, God in the flesh. And to me, that, that's what Christmas is all about, coming to earth. It's all about the incarnation. The, the, we call it the incarnation because Jesus was 100% God, but he was also 100% man, and it had to be that way. Yes. Uh, Genesis, this prophecy that God himself gave in Genesis 3.15, after Adam and Eve had sinned, God promised he was going to send a Savior Amen. that was going to bruise the head of Satan. He said, Satan will bruise your heel, his heel, but that heel that he bruised is going to crush the devil. Amen. And that's none other than Jesus Christ who came, lived, died, rose from the dead, and wants to reach into your life and heal your deepest hurt. Amen. We're going to get to that in just a moment, Dave, I'll tell you. But because of who, who Jesus was, we have to remember that that day, that night, was a holy night. Yes. Now, our announcer is a great trumpet player, and I've said this before. You've heard him with us. He's been with us for years and years as our announcer, Dr. Chuck Oman. But I, I would like for you to hear him play this beautiful, beautiful trumpet uh, on uh, this Christmas program. Oh, holy night. Chuck? certainly that does tell the story. Oh, holy night. Something else that tells the story, and that's our offer of the week. Oh, I love this offer. It is the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Please take a look at the promo right now. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Van Impey Ministries. Dr. Van Impey has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Van Impey used to categorize 
memorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Oh, please make the call or write to us. What a great Christmas gift. What a great wedding gift. I've given them up for weddings. Or just to, to somebody that you're burdened for, maybe they're going through something. The Holy Bible, Jack's Prophecy Bible. So much in here. Please make the call and we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Now we're going to get back to the Holy Day and what it's all about. Well, you well know that Caesar Augustus was in power at the time and he commanded everybody to be taxed. And of course, Joseph, you know, had a history of um, in uh, Bethlehem and he had to go there because that's where the, he would pay his taxes. So take a look, please, at this first picture, the midnight call, Bethlehem, Christ, and uh, see, there they are, Joseph, Mary, and she is expecting her baby. And then there you are, Israel, my glory, when God became a man. Yes, there was no room for them in the end. So he had to go out to the stable. He was born in this manger. And there you see it. Oh, my. I said to Dave just before we went on, he didn't choose to come to earth to be born in a palace. He was born in a stable. How humble, how beautiful that is for the Son of God. Well, something else happened. There are the shepherds out there, and the angel came to them, and they said, make haste and go find Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in a manger because he's the Savior of the world. And, of course, many of the angels came, and they began to follow the angels, and they came. And what did they find? There they found Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Oh, my, they were so happy. There's a little lamb down there, yes? And then going on, another picture. I love this one also. Oh, how great that the shepherds did what the Lord commanded them to do, and they came and found Jesus. And there, again, one of these pictures. I really, really love this one also. But there was another star out there. Now, these three wise men were quite away from Bethlehem, but they did follow the star and eventually come to where Jesus was. You know, I love it. I love what Jack had to say about God becoming a man. We all know the story. Does it mean much to you? Have you ever opened your heart to Jesus, the Son of God, why he came? A lot of people, Dave, don't really put emphasis on Christmas. This is what it's all about, God becoming a man. The day God became one of us. That's right, Savior of the world. But we have to become uh, willing to admit that. Well, in John chapter 1, it says, To as many as received him, gave he them power, or the privilege to become children of God. And you know, Rexella, Christmas is about the presence of God. Emmanuel uh, was a name for Jesus, which means God with us. And yeah. when Jesus came to earth, God came to earth. I mean, he was God incarnate for a purpose. And the reason for Christmas, the reason that Jesus had to come is he was going to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin that goes all the way back to Adam. When Adam sinned, we picked it up and we've sinned. And the wages of sin is death. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, one mediator between God and man. And that's this Jesus Christ that was born that first Christmas. Amen. And I want to go on here and show you another picture that I love, if you will, please. The purpose of the incarnation. That's what it's all about. This next picture, this is why Jesus came to die for our sins. Jesus came uh, not just to uh, make a name for himself on earth or become a human being, but he came to pay the penalty for our sins. I'm so happy for this next part of our program because 
Jesus came for you. He came that you might have eternal life. Are you on the alcohol? Are you out there just doing a party? Are you carrying a real burden of your sin on you? You don't have to. Jesus paid the penalty when he died on the cross for you and for me. Oh, thank you, Lord, for coming. Thank you for the opportunity to open our hearts and to be saved. I'm going to ask our guest, Dr. Williams, if you will pray that wonderful prayer of accepting Christ into their hearts. This is your miracle moment. Pray this with me. Say this, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you were raised from the dead. And right now at this moment, I ask you into my life to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and be the one who brings the presence of God into my life and into every situation. In Jesus' name, I pray it, I believe it, amen. 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 I believe many out there pray that prayer with you, Dave. I believe so. And if you pray that prayer, you know you've just become a child of God. Please write to me if you prayed. I'll send you absolutely free this little book of first steps in a new direction. You don't have to depend on the alcohol. The Lord will give you the joy in your heart. You don't have to depend on some of the things that are people doing right now. You have eternal life. You've been forgiven. Oh, how wonderful. And now... I just want you to know that everything we've been talking about today, as I said before, is here in our wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. And here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Don't put it off. Christmas is around the corner. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order your Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Epi Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Epi Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. And don't put it off. Make the call or write right away. One of the greatest gifts that you could give at any time of the year. I want you to do something. Make this a Christmas that you'll always remember. Be like the wise men and come to the manger because the greatest gift of all was laid in a manger. How wonderful to know the Son of God came to earth because He loves you, He loves me. God bless you as you walk with Him in the new year. We look forward to being with you again in the near future. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was paid for by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.